Welcome back to all my MCU fans out there. Elliot here from Movie Files discussing the second episode of Moon Knight. Full spoilers ahead as we learn more about Mark Spector, his relationship with Layla, Arthur and his plan. There's a battle between the gods and we also meet a new personality by the name of Mr. Knight. I'm so excited to break it all down for you all here in this spoiler review. But before we do so, make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to the channel and love early movie reviews, TV breakdowns and live streams, well come and join the community by subscribing and hitting that notification bell as you can see on the screen now if you enjoyed this spoiler review well make sure to give it a thumbs up and also share the review but more importantly after you've seen the second episode let's talk about it in the comments pros cons what are your thoughts about this battle amongst the gods and what it could lead to for maybe the greater mcu which speaking of the mcu we still don't have a sense of placement and other things in the mcu which i'm okay with but let me know how you all feel about that and of course we got more moon Knight. Night. We got Mr. Knight. We got some action, a little bit of horror there. Let's talk about all your pros and cons in the comments below. So just my initial thoughts. If you saw my review last week, I wouldn't say I was lukewarm, but I was like, eh, you know, it was an okay episode. But this one to me, and this is why I sometimes wish Marvel would release, you know, one and two together because I think this is a great kind of follow-up. This felt very cinematic in regards to that was a little bit of the first half of a film if we want to call it that broken into six chapters and now we're kind of leaning more into okay what we really diving into what are we getting into with the gods and Arthur's plan and meaning more about Mark Spector his relationships the relationship with their mother more about Steven so this kind of definitely to me was a much stronger episode in the narrative the performance were a little bit more um, lively in my opinion uh, especially from I Oscar Isaac who's great in episode one but I love that we get to see him doing multiple things in this episode and again I'm here for the supernatural we got more of that I'm here from the action Got a little bit of mature killing that went down this episode, but overall, this episode much more to me explored the world, gave me more I was looking for in the series, and I think it's a uh, 10 times better than the first episode, which again wasn't terrible, but just didn't leave up, live up to my necessarily expectation. But this second episode was really great in my opinion. But we're going to get into my thoughts here again. Go ahead and leave your first impressions in the comments below as we break it all down. Again, getting into the spoiler discussion here. We open kind of immediately after the events of episode one. Steven wakes up, he goes into work. He's still kind of under the impression that everything that took place in the last 24 hours have been a dream. But then when he goes to work, he sees that the police are there. They're taping off the area in which he had the events from last episode. He talks to his security friend, or I shouldn't say friend because he doesn't even know his name, but he looks at the footage. He warns the security guy, you're in for a treat, my friend, as he plays the footage back. And unfortunately, this is where I really want to dive into, is what Steven's seen, is it actually real? And as we see the footage... It doesn't appear to be, as it's just Steven, or Steven knows this is Mark, or is Mark in his head, and we'll get into that discussion a little bit later. We don't see the jackal. We don't see the creature. We just see Steven, or again, Mark, just looking up at the camera, which makes you wonder, did Mark alter the footage? Did the cameras just not catch a good angle? Can the cameras not capture this supernatural beam? Because as we'll get to a little bit later in the conversation, no one else saw the jackal. Uh, you know, Layla didn't see the jackal. The people in the streets didn't see the jackal. The only one that sees it is Mark. So is, again, is that tied to when you are the avatar of a god, you can see these supernatural things and, and, and a human can't see it? Let me know your thoughts on how all that shaped up and why we can't see the jackal and see these creatures. Let's talk about that in the comments below. But unfortunately, these events have led to Steven losing his job. He tells his best golden buddy about this, but then Steven gets the idea like, well, let me at least investigate this Mark Spector and look into his storage unit, which leads us into him going to the storage unit. He finds this neat, organized, militant type of situation with you know Mark Spector's gear, his equipment, his guns, his illegal stuff. And this is where Mark and Steven kind of have that one-on-one -on -one conversation which I gotta say that discovery and that conversation that duality of the character the way Oscar Isaac is portraying it has been one of the best elements well I'm gonna say one of it is the best element of the first two episodes thus far 
The action we'll talk a little bit about later. The world building we'll talk a little bit about later. But that duality and that conflict between two characters, really so much so in this episode, have been the best moments. And the question that comes at hand, who is Mark Spector? And this is where we get to the conversation. Mark serves Kanju as his avatar and Steve is too. They protect the vulnerable and deliver justice to those that hurt others. And a deal has been made between Mark Spector and Anju. So I love that, again, knowing my limited knowledge of the comics, that plays very much so into the comics. But again, this is the MCU. This is Kevin Feige. They like to adapt things and put their own kind of spin to it. But as far as the Mark Spector that I kind of have researched, this kind of falls in line with the comic book accuracy in that matter. But getting back into the conversation, Steven isn't down about this uh, this kind of, you know, mercenary lifestyle that Mark is living. So he takes it upon himself to take all the stuff he's found. He runs down the hall. This is where Kanju appears. And obviously he's frayed. And this is where kind of those horror tinges kind of highlighted in this episode. To me, it wasn't, you know, scary. But, you know, for someone that might not explore the supernatural, that might a little be about a little, a little scariness there, someone running down a hall and you have this creature chasing him. So again, I give them props for at least, this is the first time we've really explored horror in the MCU. And again, it's tame to a certain extent, but I still kind of like the, the setup and how they, you know, had the lights kind of, the scene was, you know, well choreographed, I'll say that. But that leads to Steven running into Layla, and this is where we get a little bit more of that exposition as Steven finds out that they've been married, and he's like, wait, you're married to Mark. How long has this been going on? And we find out in this conversation that it's Mark who I'm assuming is doing this because he wants to protect his wife, Layla. He wants to get a divorce and kind of get her away from this lifestyle. As we learn later in the episode, Kanju has his eyes on a new avatar in the form of Layla, which again explains a little bit more of why he wants to separate her from this lifestyle because he doesn't want her to be the new host, which I wonder... If that's going to be some type of compromise towards the end of the season, if Layla's going to assume the, uh, you know, a Kanju, or if she's going to stick to Mark after Mark and Steven and Mr. Knight maybe get on the same page. You know, we'll get into that a little bit later. But again, this is where we get more of the influence that Arthur has. If we get these police that come in. They're looking for the item that we got last week in the form of the uh, scarab, and they take Steven in, and then again, we get more of the exposition, and going back to the comic book accuracy from what I remember about Mark Spector, they fill us in on him being a mercenary, a part of a team that kills when needed, and this is definitely, to me, this is what I mentioned, the cinematic nature. The way that this episode played, the look, the feel, not that episode one didn't look cinematic, but this one definitely, to me, felt like I was watching a movie, and again, Again, this feels like the second half of a film in regards to getting the, the narrative, getting the world building, getting the backstory. And this is the stuff in the episode. I'm like, okay, this is really highlighting what I'm looking forward to seeing in this series. As we cut to in comes Arthur. And again, we see his influence. He has the cops in his pocket. He has a very wide influence on everyone in the, this area. As we see him walking down the street and we see this other side of Arthur, the loving side, the caring side, but also those people that are drinking the Kool-Aid as they believe in him and believe in him bringing back Ahmed and, and the, the judgment conversation that we'll get into here a little bit and just touching a little bit more on the performance. Oscar Isaac, fantastic, and we'll get to more of his performance a little bit later when he has a time to shine with all three of his uh, characters or personalities. But man, I'm really enjoying Ethan Hawke. I love this kind of, again, he comes off as someone that is caring and loving and wants heaven on earth, as he says. But again, it's just the way he delivers it that you know Arthur, or I should say Ethan Hawke in this moment, he's in it for chaos. He wants, he's under is so interesting because as we have the conversation at the table with him and Steven, he is he believes everything he's saying, but I wonder if he like is fully is if it is a matter of him being consumed by this God is corrupting him or is there already corruption inside of him? Because it seems like these gods choose their avatars for a specific reason. As we see Arthur tells Steven that, you know, maybe, you know, Kanju chose you because you're broken. So there has to be a reason why these guys are attaching themselves to these individuals as we get a pretty interesting reveal here that Arthur was the avatar for Kanju before Steven and Mark and another character that we'll talk about here in a second. So that's very interesting as he talks about, I was once the fist of vengeance. He once had himself consumed by the moon god in Moon Knight suit. So 
that's interesting to me because again, not knowing the comics so deep into the lore, I don't believe Arthur ever was consumed by the moon god or was ever moon nut at any point. So that's interesting. So it kind of shows that he has that knowledge. He has the experience with these gods and it's really shapes up to who to believe is because in this conversation, Arthur really kind of points out the differences between these gods and there seems to be a battle amongst the gods and that Kanju was kind of shunned and kind of forbidden and or it's not forbidden, but banned from these other gods. So again, is he have good intentions, these vengeance, these things that he's doing amongst the bad uh, that Arthur believes in, Ahmed, in regards to judgment and judging those and cleansing them of their evils, which I'm not going to lie, that particular plot there in regards to prejudging someone for something that they may or may not do, that sounds a little bit familiar. That sounds very similar to Winter Soldier and the program that they want to implement before, obviously, Cap and, you know, Bucky and Black Widow and, and Nick Fury. They were able to dismantle, uh, you know, Hydra and stop that from happening. But that felt very familiar to the Hydra plan that they had. But again, these are Egyptian gods. So obviously, if you would, you know, chronologically speaking, this plan makes more, you know, maybe Hydra got those influences from that particular god and, and you know, the, the whole idea that they have there. But it sounded very similar to Winter Soldier. Let me know if you all thought about that. But going back to Arthur and Ethan Hawke's performance, he has this line in the scene where he refers to the best cure is to have a little bit of that disease, which again shows more of his menacing side, which is he corrupted by the god or is that truly his beliefs does he have that thought mindset of this kind of you know person that has these followers sipping the kool-aid and he's just so influenced by this that this is really what he believes inside let me know what you all think about that and again the conversation was really well written in my opinion but getting back into the action side of the show this is where Layla comes in she has a scarab and this is where we get the jackal coming up being summoned by Arthur and we have a little bit of that back and forth a little bit of the conversation but going back to what I mentioned up top as the jackal breaks through as we see Lila and Steven run off she doesn't see the jackal only Steven does which again can the human mind and the eyes can't see this? Is there really no jackal? Is there something more, uh, you know, supernatural going on? As we see at this point, the jackal push Stevens out of the window, and this is where we get our new personality in the form of Mr. Knight. So just to give you all just a kind of a comic book uh, information on these particular characters, in the comics, we know that, or I should say if you don't know, Moon Knight, it's, it's broken into four different characters, right? Four different personalities. Obviously, we know about Moon Knight. He's the, the vengeance. He's the one that fights. We also have Steven, who in the comics is different from what the show has given us so far. Steven in the comics is actually a millionaire, where we don't see that in this show. He's obviously, he doesn't have a job at this point in the episode. And then there's another gentleman, another personality that goes by the name of Jake, who's a taxi driver who kind of keeps his ears to the ground, kind of knows what's going on on the street level. And then you have Mr. Knight, very snazzy, very sophisticated looking individual. And he's someone that kind of handles more of the conversations. He's He's more of the suave guy. He's one of the people that has conversations with the police and investigates things. Again, he doesn't, he can fight, he can do hand to hand, but he's more about the detective element, if you want to say that. I know a lot of people compare Moon Knight to uh, Batman. If, you know, Batman has the hand to hand combat, the Dark Knight, then this is the more detective side of Batman in the form of Mr. Knight, which again, I'm not going to lie, the suit, the look, pretty clean, pretty crisp if you ask me. But getting back into the actual sequence here, in comes the action. Again, Layla, who can't see the jackal, she hits it over the head with the bottle and she can kind of see the outline of the jackal, but still it doesn't form itself. She can't like fully see it. And this is where we get the fight in the streets. No one else can see the jackal. They just see this guy in his white suit with his white mask fighting the air, which is, you know, kind of funny because, again, it goes back into the mental state of Steven. Is it real? Is it fake? Is the jackal there? Is it supernatural that, again, the humans can't see this supernatural element? Again, this is the stuff I'm really enjoying about the episode. But as far as critiquing, you know, criticizing, reviewing the action, it's still okay. I, I'm still not blown away by the hand-to-hand -hand combat. The VFX of, you know, Moon Knight and Mr. Knight are, are clean to a certain extent, but I'm, I'm hoping as time goes by, as the episodes go in, we get more of that cleaner MCU look, right? And get more of that visual effects. Even the Jackal, to a certain extent, isn't as clean as I hope it would be, especially 
this is Disney, this is Marvel, this is, you know, billions upon billions of dollars. I'm hoping that the visual effects get a little bit more crisper in my personal taste. But as far as the action goes, they're chasing the, the scarab. We have the jackal chasing Moon Knight in the roof and we get that beautiful shot that we've seen in the trailer hopping from roof to roof and we see the outline or the background, the foreground of the moon. He eventually kind of times it perfectly where he's able to kill the a jackal. And I will say, I mentioned in my critique last week, I want to see the action. I want to see the mature blood and all that stuff. We, we get a glimpse of that as he impales a jackal on top of this, uh, you know, like a, like a kind of a church setting. And there's no blood, unfortunately, but it, it dissolves into sand. So I'm hoping again, as the season goes on, we can see blood. We can get more of that violence that I'm looking for, a la in a Daredevil series. Again, I know they're not going to go pushing it to that Raider R limit, but let's push the boundaries a little bit. But again, in that scene, that was a definitely a uh, a better uh, uh, fight sequence than what we got last week and actually seeing a little bit of that maturity that I was looking for in the series. But let me know what you thought about that particular scene. But getting back into the conversation, this is where we get the tension. This is what I really loved about this episode. Again, the duality between Steven and Mark and we have Moon Knight and we have, you know, Mr. Knight. I don't know if Jake's going to be in this series at all, but neither here nor there. The tension's established. We can see this conversation between the two, and we get the conversation in regards to Mark saying, listen, Stephen, you need to trust me. I, I have a plan. I have a goal. You won't see me if you just let me accomplish this. And this is where we get another bit of information, some important information. Mark is under the impression, and we even get this so much so in a, in a scene here in a second, he wants to protect Lila because, you know, uh, Kanju has plans for his next avatar in the, being in the form of Lila. So that's very interesting. It explains, again, why he wants a divorce, why he wants that separation between them, because he doesn't want that to ultimately happen. He doesn't want her life to be consumed by all this craziness, all this supernatural gods, Egypt gods, and fist of vengeance. So it's a very interesting, complex relationship that we have there, which, speaking of you know, dynamic and conflict, we see the conversation being held as we, you know, get the conversation between Mark, who's in full control right now. He's not allowing Steven to have a word at this point and seeing that switch of the character and having full control. In comes Kanju. And this is a conversation about, okay, can we trust Kanju? Because he has, he seems to be not as good guy, you know, the God with vengeance and, and helping those uh, in need, but he has his own kind of intentions and his own plans in regards to, listen, you think you're in control? I own your whole body. The last time I found you, you were just a dead corpse, which plays into the comic books, how uh, Kanju resurrected uh, Mark and, you know, got to the whole Moon Knight status. But he mentions, hey, I already have my eyes on my next uh, avatar in the form of your wife, so get things going or I'm going to make that happen sooner rather than later. So that's going to be interesting, Mark having beef with, you know, um, Kanju, but I think it's going to ultimately be Mark and Steven are going to have to come to terms and have to work together because they don't want Lila, even Steven has feelings for Lila at this point, they don't want her to get involved. So I think that's going to be kind of the, the arc that we see throughout this season is them coming on the same page, being on the same page, learning to work together so, you know, Kanju can decide to keep them as his main avatar and not their wife. So really interesting stuff there as we kind of wrap up the episode and we get the mission at hand, which leads us to Mark Spector, who's still in full control is now in Egypt on the way for the scarab and having Arthur not get his mission, which is resurrecting Amit God and bringing heaven on earth, which probably be more hell on earth and the deception that's going on with Arthur. So like I said, cinematically speaking, I felt the cinematic vibes in this episode. I love the duality between Steven and Mark and now getting Mr. Knight in the mix and seeing Moon Knight in action, which was pretty cool. And, and again, VFX are, are fine. I'm, I'm hoping that it gets better as we go on. But again, that stuff is fascinating. The world building is getting interesting. We're, we're traveling. This show is moving along. We're London. Now we're in uh, you know Egypt. So I love that it's globe trotting as promised. That Indiana Jones meets Fight Club as it was advertised. So I'm loving all that stuff. Again, I want more of that maturity. I want more of the violence. I want more of the action as we move along. And I'm perfectly fine with the MCU's influence not really being heavily involved in the show. Uh, if we get it, great. If we don't, I'm okay with that. I love that we're just establishing this world so far, the supernatural, the battle amongst the gods, you know, Kanju being, uh, you know, removed from his other group of gods and what other gods are involved out there and, and the avatars, them taking on their uh, persona. So I'm really interested to know if there's any other people that's been affected by that. So, hey, 
episode two was definitely a step up, my favorite out of the two, and I'm really excited to see what episodes three, four, five, and six have up its sleeve. But hey, let me know, again, your pros, your cons. I didn't really see many Easter eggs in this episode, but if there are some that you all caught, definitely let me know in the comments. And again, let's talk about what we hope to see in the weeks ahead. If you stuck around to this point in the review, I appreciate you all. Before you leave, if you haven't already, make sure to like this review, share it, leave your thoughts in the comments, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Come and join this awesome community. I appreciate you all. Hope you enjoyed the review. Hope you're staying safe. As you all can see on the screen now, subscribe to the channel. Come and join the family. Check out my other content. We'll catch you on the next video.